He was considered one of the best rugby players on earth. Yeah, at one stage, I guess there, there, there was a time where I did feel on top of the world playing rugby. You know, I described him as a national treasure the other day and, and, and I, I actually do mean that. The game they play in heaven, though, at times proved hell in the spotlight. Yeah, that, that was a very tough period of my, of my life. You know, I learned so much from it. I think what, what got me into that, um, into that uh, tough period was me worrying about everyone else and not doing what's right for Kirtley. A fresh start with the Waratahs a saving grace. I'm feeling very confident. You know, next year's going to be a big one for me. I'm um, joining the Tars. You know, there's a lot of players that, that actually help me become a better player and a better person. I'm not looking to be anyone's social worker or mother. I'm a rugby coach. He's here to play rugby. If they cross the line, there'll be penalty to pay. A switch to rugby league, a future possibility. There has been a few NRL clubs out there um, interested, and that's the same as uh, overseas. But the star playmaker is determined to wear the green and gold again. Doing everything I can to actually to win. You know, having that mindset um, definitely will, will help me get one step closer to, to the gold jersey. He's a game breaker and a game winner, and um, that's their important ingredients. And discovering his Indigenous heritage, a vital journey. That'll help me build the strength I need, and that'll help me find the identity that I'm that I need and um, I guess at the end of the day it'll tick the boxes where becoming and understanding my complete self. Can Kirtley Beale stay on track to return to the pinnacle of world rugby? Find out on Living Black Conversations. Hi Kirtley and thanks for joining us on Living Black Conversations. Happy to uh, be here and uh, actually talk to you more. Well you've reached the um, highest level of your sport playing in the green and gold from 2009 and from that time you experienced that some of the highs and lows of being a famous sports star. Um, what's been the most challenging um, aspect of your career so far? I, I'm very grateful for um, the position I'm in at the moment. Uh, Obviously, a lot of people that uh, stuck by me through the highs and lows of my career, and um, you know th those close people. Um, you know, without them, uh, I don't think I'll be able to um, sit here and um, you know talk about my my career as it is. So, you know, there there were some tough times, and um, I think those times were, were were great learning curves for myself to be able to um, you know um, experience um, you know life in general, and, and uh, um, you know understand a lot about myself and, and the position I am I'm in uh, you know, in society I guess you know be being a professional athlete you've got to understand that uh, you know there's there come certain responsibilities and you now I, I know I was uh, thrown into uh, professional um, sport at a very young age but and uh, you know a lot of the the mistakes I've made along the way um, I guess has helped me um, understand yeah the position I'm in and and the, and the responsibilities that I have um, with my job. So, um, yeah, I'm very grateful for, for everything that's, um, that's come my way. And, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, coming to the New South Wales Waratahs um, in 2014 is going to help me uh, overcome some of the, um, the challenges um, ahead. And, um, you know, which I think they will because they're, they're such a fantastic club. And, um, you know, there's a lot of strong believers and, a lot of strong support there that can help me um, you know, get through um, throughout those tough times so I'm looking forward to it. Well as you said you're now back in Sydney and, and you have signed with your new club the Waratahs. Um, Do you think they can be a force in, the, in next year's competition? Definitely. I think uh, you know, it's just a matter of um, you know, combining everyone together and gelling very quickly. I think uh, we're in pre-season at the moment and we're doing that very well. A lot of the old guys and young guys are mixing it together very well and there's a lot of talent on display, so obviously we've got a few Wallabies coming back from the spring tour, and they obviously add a lot of um, a lot of experience and uh, you know um, a lot of intelligence in, in how we want to play. So hopefully uh, you know we can get them back as soon as we can, and um, you know start building towards um, our first game against Western Force. Well, as you said, you're you're in training at the moment. So how are you fitting in with the team and under the uh, guidance of your coach Michael Checker? 
He's, um, he's been fantastic and, and been a very good supporting person, just giving me that confidence um, every week. You know, on the field he's obviously picked up a few things that I need to work on, which is great because, you know, it's, it's definitely keeping me on my toes and, and keep me on that edge that I, and that's something that I haven't had that for the last couple of years, so I'm very happy with that. Yeah, I think that little bit of X Factor, the ability that when the game's tight, he'll be able to unlock the opposition, he'll be able to produce that little bit of magic that can win us games. So it's still to be determined um, whether you'll play at 5-8th or fullback, um, positions that are currently occupied by Bernard Foley and Israel Folau. Yeah. Um, what is your, which is your favourite position? Um, I enjoy both positions. Uh, you know, I obviously had a, a really good year there um, playing at fullback. I guess that was my first time I, I um, broke the Wallabies playing in a number 15. So. I really enjoyed my time there, but I think you know when I was coming through through uh, my younger days, I played um, five eight, you know, the number ten position, and I think I'm definitely going to give that a really good crack this year. A lot of tens can also play fifteen and vice versa, so uh, you know I think it's going to be a difficult one. But uh, once we get a bit of pre-season, once they all come back, I think we'll start to work the combinations of training with a few trial games, and we'll see where everybody fits into the into the schedule. You previously played for the Melbourne Rebels. What was that time like? It was quite tough, and it was, um, you know, we had a lot of inexperienced players, young guys coming through, and players from all over the world. So it wasn't the best. You know, we didn't really get the results we wanted, but actually being out there on the field um, and, and understanding different game plans and um, coming up against, um, you know, top teams and middle teams and um, teams below us, it was just, it was just a great. Um, learning curve for me and I was able to build a lot of um, knowledge on, on the game and um, you know I can definitely put that, tuck that little way and, and hopefully bring that out um, you know further down, further down in my career. What was involved with your role as uh, an Aboriginal liaison officer with the Rebels? It was, it was actually really good, it was my first time actually getting that type of experience getting out and um, you know meeting all these young kids and, and trying to uh, lend a hand wherever I can. I mean, I've, I've been through the very lowest and I've actually reached the, the very top so there's a lot that I can actually give out to these kids and you know, at the moment we're, we're here at the Tars, we're actually trying to work something out here so, we're, so I can actually continue that, that work. Why did you leave, leave the Rebels? What was the decision behind that? Half of it was out of my hand um, but then the other half was just getting back to Sydney and, and being around the people you know, I call them the pillars, the pillars of my life, the pillars, you know, the people that I can actually go to um, to find, you know, to find um, encouragement and um, to find, you know, that, that, that genuine support. How do you feel you were treated by the rebels um, once you signed with the TARS? Oh, I think, I mean, I'm not sure how they felt. I didn't really read any stuff that was written about it, but... Um, because there was talk that they were trying to tarnish your reputation once you signed with the Yeah, Wild well, Tars. see, that's, that's, I mean, I, I, that's out of my hand. I don't know who said that, where it came from, but I know deep down that, uh, that the people down there that I, that I know very well, um, there's some of them will be disappointed, but I think they understand um, why the move happened. And I think, uh, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it, it's all, it's all for a good cause. It's just great, you know, that we can actually, um, I can sit here and, and say that because, you know, there might be other people's against it. Fair enough, you know, I, I can't change their views and, and, the, and I'm not going to try. So, you know, um, we'll just leave it at that and, um, you know, hopefully we can just, um, yeah, look, just look forward to my, look forward to my new journey. So let's go back to the start of your career. You were invited to regularly um, attend training sessions with the New South Wales Waratahs at the age of 15, and you were signed with them a year later while you were still at school at just 16. Um, what was that experience like? Unbelievable experience. I think um, training with the likes of uh, Matty Rogers, um, Lottie Dakiri, Wendell Saylor, uh, Phil Wall, uh, our Baxter, Matt Dunning, all these guys have gone on and represented the, the Wallabies and you know, these were guys that 
um, you know, play, had awesome experience and they've um, you know, certainly um, very influential amongst uh, the players and, and, and obviously the younger guys looking up to them. So, you know, I, I was no different and to get the opportunity to go out and uh, throw the ball around with them and uh, not try and tackle them because I, was, I know I was only a little skinny fella back then, but um, it was, that was pretty daunting. But it was, yeah, it's just a crazy experience and something that I'll never forget. I remember watching him play as a schoolboy and um, we are looking for a, that type of personality, the guy that can come out and be creative and um, in the end we waited for him to finish school. We, we signed him, we had to wait for him to finish school so he'd, uh, he'd come and join the Waratahs and he did that and uh, he was an instant, instant success, you know, it was hard. It was a young kid stepping up. Uh, he had some very bright moments, in, particularly his first year, it was a tough season. The second year he, he was playing in the playmaker role and took the team, the Waratahs, to the final that year and um, so very influential. How important was it to um, be the captain of the, the first grade side at school? It kind of changed uh, my whole perspective on the rugby league and rugby union thing because you know, at times at school I didn't really understand the, a lot of the rules in rugby union. You know, even when I was captain there I didn't really understand uh, what was going on. I'd be going up to the ref and saying, uh, you know, blah, 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 and he'd be like, what are you, just, what are you talking about here, mate? And I said, I don't really know, but thanks anyway. So it's just one of those moments. and. I think, um, but now having that leadership role has definitely um, given me, you know, I think um, a lot of respect amongst my, my friends and I can see they, 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 they respect me for who I am and what I do in my life now and, um, and I think, you know, that helps me, um, you know, continue on my path. So he had three years in the first 15, which is extraordinary. He had an amazing talent. And just conducted himself on the field so well. The rugby community has dined out on Kirtley his entire life. We, we just love the way he plays the game. He truly is an, an exceptional athlete. Um, you know, I described him as a national treasure the other day and, and, and I, I actually do mean that to the extent that to have um, an Indigenous boy who's come up, you know, his entire life focused on our game and now performing so well at the elite level of the game, he's a very, very special part of the Australian rugby fabric. Was it always your dream to be a Wallaby? I guess when I was younger, I played when uh, played rugby league. So, um, I guess being representing Australia or just playing in any NRL club uh, was probably my dream. But getting the opportunity to go to St Joseph's College, um, it was a boarding school, and uh, it only played rugby union. So that's where I was introduced to rugby union, and from year seven to year twelve, uh, I. That's all I played and obviously there was a lot of uh, great things uh, that happened to me throughout those years and, and I understood the Wallaby brand a lot more when I was at school so I guess when I was from at school to now, yeah, the Wallabies were definitely the pinnacle and something that I've always dreamt of, uh, of doing. It just brings high skill, high skill and, um, and there's an element of toughness there now too which, um, you know, which he's developed as he's matured as a player so um, he's a game breaker and a game winner. And, um, that's their important ingredients. Well, you've experienced some difficult periods during your rugby career um, while playing with the uh, Melbourne Rebels and, and with the Wallabies. Earlier this year, you checked yourself into an alcohol rehabilitation uh, clinic in May. What challenges were you facing at the time? Yeah, that, that was a very tough period of my, of my life, and um, no, I learned so much from it. It was just, it was more about me. I, at the time, I, I, I couldn't worry about everyone else around me because. I think what, what got me into that, um, into that uh, tough period was me worrying about everyone else and not doing what's right for Kirtley. So it was very hard, um, you know, dealing with that. But I think and I feel right now that I've um, overcome those issues and I've got a really good understanding of what, what, what Kirtley needs in, in his life. And, um, you know, without those experiences, uh, you know, I don't think... Uh, you know, um, I'll, be, I'll be here where I am now. So you feel that you have benefited from, um, you know, attending the clinic and... Yeah, definitely. I didn't think in my wildest dreams that I'd, I'd actually, you know, um, sign myself into something like that, you know. But it just really gave me a good insight of, um, of, of what I need um, from, from then onwards to, to actually um, succeed in life. Kirtley's extremely talented. Uh, there are a few um, things where I guess wrong choices he's made but 
Well, he's only young, and of course he'll turn it around. Well, I think he will. He's a young person who's got many years of football ahead of him, and and, and I'm confident that you know he'll learn from the past and uh, go on to bigger and better things. Are you still undergoing rehabilitation at the moment? No, not not at the moment. I think um, I've kind of moved on from that. There was a stage there where I was going quite regularly, and like I said, I feel like I'm in a really good position now. I mean, I'm a, I'm a grown man, and you know, if uh, you, you just got to cop the consequences of, uh, you know, if you fall out of line, you just got to cop it on the chin. And we're playing a game here with men, and men make decisions and adults. I'm not looking to be anyone's social worker, you know, I'm a, or, or mother. I'm a rugby coach. He's here to play rugby. He'll do everything that the other team got, uh, the, his teammates are expected to do in relation to being well prepared. And, and like I say to any of them, if, you, if they cross the line, there'll be a penalty to pay, not just for them, for their teammates. And that's what building a good team's about. Well, following that time in rehab, um, the then Wallabies coach, Robbie Deans, backed you, gave you a lot of support during that difficult period. Um, and you were selected for the British and, and Irish Lions test. Uh, what did that do for your confidence? I think um, he taught me a lot of things along the way. And um, I think when giving me the opportunity to, to go back with um, to show that faith of me, um, you know, by picking me in the Lions um, squad, I mean, <laughs> it really sunk in because it, again, it, it, you know, making me understand, you know, the influence I have on other people and, yeah, the importance that I have on, on the team. Well, let's talk about the first test, which uh, proved to be a, a huge challenge when you slipped and, and missed while attempting to kick a penalty uh, that could have won the game for the Wallabies. Um, what was going through your head at the time and, and um, how did that experience and loss affect you? I think that it's just a rugby game. I think, you know, it's, it's, I, haven't, I still haven't watched the replay of it. It's, <laughs> um, I've got to come around it one day, but it's obviously hard to um, deal with. You know, there, there, there were a lot of um, mistakes before that kick that kind of you know, got to me and um, you know, as I was approaching the kick, I, I wasn't really thinking about anything, I was just thinking about the process of just kicking the ball and I just had to kind of back myself and just believe in myself and just uh, trust, trust my style and trust my approach and unfortunately there I, I slipped and, um, and it was just the way it is. So I've accepted that now and I think it's helped me become a better rugby player actually. When he missed that kick the other day against the Lions and I was there watching it on TV and thinking, oh, you poor fellow, you know, like this, the whole country's waiting for this. And, uh, and it slipped. And I uh, oh, saw him after that, he was devastated, you know. But that happens. It's um, only a few years ago before that, he's in South Africa and he kicked one from, you know, an impossible position to win a test match. It's there! Bill from halfway! There's been uh, rumours of a possible move to rugby league. What are you thinking of rugby league or union? I played rugby league when I was younger and there's always been a dream to play rugby league. Now I, I know that I, I've got that desire to do that so I'm not really worried about that at the moment. My focus is purely on making the most of the opportunity I have here at the, at the Waratahs because you know they, they have given me that chance to actually to um, go out and prove myself again and and uh, try and make the most of it. Do you think that it, it is a possibility down the track and have any clubs um, you know, made any offers to you? Yeah, there, there has been a few NRL clubs out there um, interested. Um, and that's the same as uh, overseas. There are a few clubs here and there, but um, you know, I, I think uh, right now in the position I'm in, in the position that I was in, I think being here at the Waratahs is probably the best best move for me. Well, your new journey is about searching for your, your family heritage yeah. as well. You've been very open about that. Yeah. How important is that to you? The family is everything to me and, uh, um, you know, to be able to um, go back and, and find people that my grandparents grew up with and that'll help me build the strength I need and that'll help me find the identity that I, that I need and um, I guess at the end of the day it'll tick the boxes where becoming and understanding my complete self. I always grew up in Sydney, I wasn't really 
um, exposed to being in rural areas and, and being brought up on on the missions and, and stuff like that, like a few of my cousins have been. And I think if I get back there and, and uh, uh, to the bush, like you know, to up Bree, I've always wanted to go up there, and I'm trying to get Dad actually to. Um, to get me and then take me up there and a few of my uncles. So hopefully, you know, I know that'll be a wonderful experience to be able to uh, um, go up there and um, you know, meet a lot of my mob up there and uh, you know just actually experience it because you know there 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 is something they're missing. You know, um, and you know I want to I want to find that out and I want to feel it. You know what I mean? What's propelled you to onto this path to explore your Indigenous well, heritage? I, I visited the uh, Tiwi Islands, just on top of uh, um, the Darwin there, and um, to, to actually go up there and, and, and uh, experience these, these different communities on Melville Island and Bathurst Island. There, they've still got their lingo, they've still got their family rituals, and it's just so it's, it's unbelievable. It's very touching and very moving because I couldn't couldn't believe how. You know these kids are there. They, they're they're talking in their lingo, and, and they still go out hunting, and uh, you know gathering and doing all these different things that I didn't really think happened anymore. Because to live life now, you've got to adapt to you know, this Western civilization, and that's hard to take. But you know I grew up in it. But you know seeing what happened up there in the Tiwis, it was just mind blowing, and and really got to me because it was, it was actually quite sad because I was, and, and, and embarrassing because they were asking me questions of, you know, where, where's your mob and what, what, you know, what's your tribe and all this. I'm like, I've got no idea. Do you think that once you do um, learn more about your family that will um, help you to keep grounded? Exactly right. Like I think um, you definitely go on that path and, and uh, you do kind of understand that you know, life's not all about you know the, the riches and glams of being a professional athlete it's you kind of actually appreciate the small things in life and you know along the way of um, of I've, I've seen that you know and especially my Tiwi experience where these kids is these kids are actually one carrying around the wrong football the Sharon <laughs> it's not good I'm trying to actually get a few uh, convert a few rugby balls up there but <laughs> so what's it like being back home in Sydney and closer to your family uh, the best feeling ever I, I guess I did I living in Melbourne I, for the last two years I didn't really understand how much family meant to me they are the backbone of me now and hopefully um, you know with the family behind me um, they can keep me on the right track I'm really proud of him to see him where he is today and playing for Australia and seeing him grow from year seven right through to year 12 just changed a lot of his football, his rugby career. You can just see it from day one when he touched the football. Straight away what to do and how to play and it's natural talent I think in him. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, really proud of him. So what were you like as a, as a kid and who inspired you? I always just wanted to, yeah, just play sport. Really, um, you know, I was, I was always a shy guy, a shy kid. You know, I still am today. Sometimes, you know, I kind of second guess myself and um, and very quiet. But then once I got to know someone, I'd probably be a, an annoying pest. My grandfather was the most influential person in my life. You know, I was very grateful to to have him in my life. He's, he's passed on now, and. Um, you know that that was that was hard to kind of that was a tough period for me to kind of go through because I've just I've just lost the, the man in my life that you know really um, stuck by me and, and gave me the words the wisdom he always kept me on that right track and he taught me about you know the the values of life and you know, respecting your elders and you know always presenting yourself um, you know and you know in a, in a well mannered way and. Yeah, you know, he was the main guy that actually got me to Joey's, and because you know, without him, it was—I I don't think I would have been there. And you know, I, and I always said that Joey's changed my life, and uh, yeah, so I guess I, you know, I owe it to my grandpa. Yeah. What was family life like? You were—you were born in Blacktown, yeah. but you were raised um, by your grandparents. Yeah, I was born in Blacktown, raised in Mandurah, and it. You know, at, at times it was tough. You know, it was, there were times there where um, 
you know, it was, um, it was scary, but, but I always, I was always happy because, um, you know, having my grandparents and my mother there, you know, um, and just pretty much my aunties and uncles, they were all there and we, we got one big mob out there, you know, and it was always fun just playing with my cousins and mucking around and, and doing things, you know, that kind of kept me um, intact and didn't really, um, it didn't really um, take me off, I guess, uh, take me off uh, my dreams of, um, you know, becoming a professional athlete. So, because we were always playing netball, tennis or basketball or, you know, touch footy on the road. Well, you're considered to be one of the best players in the world. How does that sit with you? In the world, yeah, at one stage, I, I guess there, there, there was a time where I did feel on top of the world playing rugby, but, you know, obviously there's been a few setbacks with myself now, a lot of injuries, um, changing clubs, you know, inconsistent um, out on the pitch. So it's just, that's hard, but, you know, um, I'm feeling very confident. You know, next year's going to be a big one for me, um, joining the Tars, and, you know, there's a lot of players that, that actually help me become better a better player and a better um, a better person so um, you know exciting times